Hey, did you forget that the Soviet Union had their own version of the X-1 rocket plane? Well, I'm not blaming you one bit. Yes, I'm dead serious. The Cold War brought Soviet rocket planes to break sound barriers, test re-entry heating, and lay the foundational research for the Buran Space Shuttle program. But did the first Soviet rocket plane beat the American X-1 counterpart? This complex race to space will finally be answered on the first Vintage Retrospect of 2025. Hello, I am Chad, your host for Vintage Retrospect, a place for all things vintage space. You requested more Soviet content, so it's finally here, and we can now solve the space race mystery if the Soviets had actually developed a rocket plane before the Americans did. Although the development of rocket planes started in the Soviet Union in the 1930s, rocket enthusiasts such as Konstantin Tsiolkovsky was the first rocket scientist to understand that in order for a plane to climb higher than the atmosphere allowed, there would be a need for a chemically induced combustion that would bring its own oxygen aboard. Just a quick rocket science lesson for those who are new to space. The higher you go, the less oxygen there is for air-breathing engines to propel the craft, but also for the aerodynamic forces to be effective on the wings and movable control surfaces. This is where the development of the first rocket plane called the RP-318, and it started the research and development of the nation's aerospace journey. This plane first flew unmanned on February 28th of 1940, but wait! This is great to know, but this was an unmanned flight, and our starting point should be comparing the comparable uh, X-1 from the United States, right? Well, it's still important to know at what point in time the Soviet roots in rocket plane technology started. So with the RP-318 in the books, we can move on to the LL-1 Soviet rocket plane, which was the first manned rocket plane to take flight in 1945 just one year earlier than the X-1. But we do need to realize that this LL-1 flight did not break the sound barrier. The LL-1 had a thrust of 14.7 kilonewtons of thrust and approximately weighed uh, 2,000 kilograms or 4,500 pounds. It was about 30 feet long with a wingspan of 23 feet. It came close to reaching the sound barrier, but no grand prize as pilots Ivanov, Sultan, Anakin and Ribko would be the first of the Sony Soviet Union to break aerodynamic speed records. So what rocket plane did break the sound barrier for the Cold War adversary? The Lavoshkin L1-178 had defeated this barrier for the Soviets on December 26, 1948, just one year after the U.S. broke the sound barrier by test pilot Chuck Yeager. And by the way, we have a video right up here um, that we did about Chuck Yeager. Uh, just a really kind of fun video about him chewing gum inside the X-1 cockpit. Go ahead and check it out up here. Now, the Soviet test pilot who achieved this goal was Colonel Ivan, I can't pronounce this uh, middle part, Fedorov. The funny part about this is the plane had, a, had to brute force its way into Mach 1 speed by performing a shallow dive with its Rolls-Royce engine at full throttle. This just feels like every aviation combat movie ever, but I would expect nothing less from the typical Russian-style kamikaze antics. To make a short story short, the Lavoshkin was the X-1 comparable rocket plane which served the same accomplishment of breaking the sound barrier. The swept design of the wings is really interesting here as the X-1 had a more boxy rectangular look and the angled wings that the Lavoshkin have may have provided more durability when making nose dives, but I am not an expert in aerodynamics, so let me know in the comments what you might come up with on the wing design. The VK-1 by Rolls-Royce was the power plant for this incredible plane and provided 26 kilonewtons of thrust while being a single stage centrifugal flow engine with nine combustion chambers. And there were more rocket planes such as the BOR series, which tested atmosphere re-entry and of course, did not fly until the 1960s, but we are not that far in history yet, and the Bohr is comparable to the X-15 rocket plane, which was flown by astronaut greats such as Neil Armstrong. 
So we're going to cover the X-15 and the BOR in a future episode. Thank you for staying with me. I know it's kind of a long one, but I'm excited to get flying again with content in 2025. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so others can help me get more people excited about vintage space. I'm your host, Chad, and I will see you out on the launch pad.